Hey everyone, it's Ivan, kitbadger.com, here today to bring you a little how-to for informational purposes only. And we are going to install a JP silent captured spring into a Gen 3 Law Tactical folder. Before we get started, what tools do we need? I'm not going to go through the entire process of installing the Law Tactical folder. You can watch the other video if you need to do that, but we're picking up right before we put on the receiver extension, buffer tube. So to that end, we're gonna need a castle nut wrench. This one right here I'm using is the option from Fix It Sticks. If you already have your Law Tactical folder installed, we want to make sure this is in fact empty, unloaded, and we'll go ahead and start. First thing we're gonna do is we need to actually end up removing our receiver extension. So we wanna go ahead and get rid of our current buffer spring as well as buffer pull that guy out and then we're also going to end up removing the current law tactical bolt carrier adapter deal pull that out and then we can go ahead and separate our upper and lower receiver if we want to doesn't really matter one way or another but since this is attached I have my receiver extension on here. I need to take it off. If you did your due diligence and actually staked your castle nut, it won't be impossible, but it might take a little bit of elbow grease. So go ahead and break this guy loose. There we go. Back this out. One thing we don't have with the Law Tactical Folder is this rear end plate holding in our spring that holds that rear detent down. So we're just gonna back our castle nut off, go ahead and back whatever receiver end plate we have off. And at this point, I should probably undo this so it doesn't get twisted up, but we're gonna go ahead and start unscrewing the receiver extension from the Law Tactical Folder. When we do this, we want this open and we want to maintain pressure in here on the pin right here that holds our buffer and spring in place. And we're gonna press down on that as we unscrew this. We're gonna set that aside and carefully take the spring out so it doesn't shoot across, disappear somewhere. And now our first step is gonna be actually replacing this with the one that comes with the new JP captured spring. At this point, we're going to install our new buffer retaining pin as well as the spring that goes with it. Spring is going to push inside, it's relatively captured. There's a scallop section on one side. We want that facing towards the rear of the pistol or rifle. So this blade almost, since this is open, if it was closed, the kind of blade portion would face forward. So with it oriented the right direction, we're gonna go ahead and put this spring down in here. Fortunately, the way the spring's made, it's more or less captured, probably won't shoot off on you. You can, of course, do this with your receiver extension already partly threaded. I didn't, so that you could hopefully see better. And now we're gonna go ahead and thread this in. As we begin to get close, we're gonna need to depress it and thread it until the retaining pin is actually captured by this receiver extension. So right there, the receiver extension is coming down in that scallop portion, and then we can go ahead and make sure that this receiver extension is vertical by moving this end plate up. There's a recessed portion in the back of this piece that corresponds with this part right there. So once that indexes, we know we are actually where we need to be. Go ahead and just hand tighten this castle nut up against it so it won't move. And after that, we need our castle nut wrench to go ahead and crank this guy down. Now with our castle nut wrench, we're gonna go ahead and tighten our castle nut down. How tight do we want it? All of the tight. Pretty much as tight as you can do it by hand and you're good to go. Especially if we do our due diligence and actually stake this castle nut, which means 
deforming some of the metal into one of these notches around the castle nut. So I'm not going to stake it right this minute, but we are ready to go ahead and put our buffer in this new captured spring. We're gonna take it and drop it in like we usually would, push it past that retaining pin. And at this point, we're gonna feel if there is any bit of play, there's a tiny bit of play right there, which is fine because tolerances between a bunch of different manufacturers. So what we're gonna do is it actually comes with shim kit, two different shims. So we are going to go ahead and install a shim now so that when we touch this, there is basically no play. This is basically just under a tiny bit of pressure by our retaining pin. Because there is ever so slightly this little bit of play in between this captured spring and the back of our receiver extension, we're gonna go ahead and take our captured spring out, depress that retaining pin, pull it forward, get that out. And now we're gonna take one of our shims. Our shim is made so that it'll go down over this. We are going to try and keep it square so it does not bind and push it down until it finally seats. At this point, there is zero wiggle room between this captured spring and the back of our buffer extension or receiver extension, the buffer tube. Our last step before we function check this will be to put our bolt carrier extension on there. You need to depress this, pull the charging handle back, gives us access to our bolt carrier group. That guy slides on there, it seats, push it all the way back down, make sure it's all the way seated, at which point we can close our law folder and go through our function check. Obviously, it's working, i.e., Bolt carrier can move back. It is definitely quieter than a spring. It's unsafe, nothing happens, on fire. Get that click, reset, click, reset, good to go. I have now successfully installed this JP captured spring into this Gen 3 Law Tactical folder. So how does it do? I have no idea, haven't shot it yet. Idea being with this captured spring, basically smooth out the cycle of operations, smooth the recoil impulse, get rid of bolt bounce, stuff along those lines. I'm looking forward to trying it. If you wanna pick one up, you can do so over at Brownells, depending on either the H or H2, around 200, 250 bucks. Is that expensive? Maybe. And since wealth is obviously a zero sum game and the fact I have one, it means you can't, sorry. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.